Hi everybody and welcome to another piano video here at Merriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison and in this video we are not reviewing pianos. We're actually going to be talking about some cool tips to get people improvising. If you have never really tried this before, uh, we're going to be looking at the 12 bar blues and talking about how that is a great platform, a great starting point launch pad uh, to get you uh, experimenting uh, with playing music without sheet music uh, and just with a basic understanding of a harmonic chord progression and a few easy patterns uh, in your right hand. So thank you very, very much for joining us for the video. If it's the first time to the channel, please do subscribe. We love keeping you informed every time we bring out uh, a brand new video. And also don't forget to comment. We love to know what you thought of the video and it always gives us uh, great ideas uh, for future content. So let's get started with this right away. So another question that we got when we sent the Q&A out to our subscribers uh, was what is some, uh, or you know, where is a good place to start? What should, uh, what type of exercises or what type of concepts could you uh, begin uh, if you were literally just at the um, outset of your musical journey uh, or um, how to uh, kind of get into improvising? So first of all, my background, and, and we may do another video where I kind of talk a little bit more uh, specifically about this, but um, I started life as a classical musician when I was quite young, and uh, improvising to me actually started in the church, uh, and not even in an organized way. This was like in a super lazy way. Um, I, when I was about 13 or 14, I started playing the organ in a country church, um, and I did not bother to spend the time to learn new preludes and postludes and uh, offertories. And so instead of just playing the same thing over and over again, I actually just started to uh, slowly make up the preludes and postludes and uh, offertories based off hymns. And that was actually the very first time where I started to play around with those concepts of improvisation. Um, and so I already had a bit of a technique down, um, but I was totally a, a newbie to the to these uh, ideas of improvisation. Um, but the harmonic simplicity and and the uh, just the stability of the structures that were built into those hymns uh, gave me a really amazing foundation to start playing around with some of those concepts. Anyway, I'm off on a bit of a tangent, but what I am going to say is. Uh, let's take a look at a very common structure uh, called the 12 bar blues uh, because I think when people are starting to get into improvising it can feel like you've got this gigantic mountain of knowledge to try and absorb and try and work through and there's so many years to go uh, that you just don't feel like it's it's easy to get discouraged really really early on um, when I look at my journey of uh, where I started to play around with the improv to the point where I would have considered myself to be more or less a professional improviser uh, was probably about a nine or a ten year journey and it was a pretty intensive journey. Nobody is going to wait around ten years to feel you know some level of satisfaction or success and keep going on with something. We need like ten minutes you know we're, we're an impatient species. So uh, talking about the 12 bar blues or dealing with the 12 bar blues uh, is great for a whole bunch of reasons. For one, when you're starting to improvise, your brain is on overload. It can't be also thinking about what chords you're trying to play, can't be thinking about the melody that you're trying to play. You need to be just dealing in uh, an environment that's very simple, super easy to internalize so that within you know a matter of weeks, you will never ever ever forget what it feels like to play through a 12 bar blues progression. So it just becomes innate, instinct, uh, and, and it's way back in the subconscious. And then you can just start focusing on all of these different sort of skill builds that can occur um, using the 12 bar blues as the vehicle for learning. So here's a suggestion for people who are wanting to get into improvising and just don't know where to start. Uh, and also need to have some sort of a, a goal that's that's reachable. Start with a 12-bar blues. This is a fantastic 
uh, device to do this. And it doesn't even, even if you don't have any interest in playing the blues, don't let the word 12 bar blues turn you off. Like, oh no, I actually just want to be doing pop. There's nothing to do with that. It, don't associate when I've said 12 bar blues with like a... It doesn't have to be that. You know, 12 bar blues could be... That's a 12 bar blues. It's not done in a bluesy style, but that is the harmonic structure. So it's very versatile. So this is what I'd like you to, to uh, start with because this is going to be a lot of fun. There's only three chords you need to know for 12 bar blues. And if we're in C major, that's C major, F major, and G major. That's it. And what makes it even easier is in your left hand, you don't even have to play the third. You literally only have to play the one or the root and the five. So in this case, that's a C and a G. That's what you're going to start with right there. And so what you're going to do uh, with your left hand is you are going to uh, start to uh, what we call swing the eighth, but it's basically uh, a uh, triplet uh, eighth note with a, uh, the first two are sort of tied. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's all you're going to do. Oh, and put a metronome on. That's the least fun slash most fun part about this. And I would just do that for, well, it doesn't matter, 15 minutes, 15 hours. Do that till that's starting to feel really comfortable. Um, now, 12 bar blues structure looks like this. You do that for four bars. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to go to F. One for two bars. Two. Back to C. Three. Four. And now up to G. Down to F. Back to C. That is your 12 bar structure. So it's four bars of one or C major, then it's two bars of four or F major, back to two bars of one or C major. And so now we're at eight bars and the last four bars starts on G for one bar, then F for one bar, and then back to C for two bars. That's the most simple form. Uh, there are many different variations to the 12 bar blues. It's not productive to get into that right now. That's the most basic simple form of kind of our modern concept of a 12 bar blues. So once you get this happening, that's now, this is where you start to add your right hand and the First thing that people like to try and do with the right hand is add all this syncopated rhythm. I would not recommend that. Uh, only because uh, even just to get both hands happening at the same time, even if the right hand is just on the beat, is hard enough. This is kind of like a, you know, rub your tummy and, you know, pat your head kind of thing. Uh, and you don't want to set yourself up to feel like this is overwhelming. You want this to be fun. And so this is what I would uh, suggest is you are going to play some version of the major triad and this could be either in root position or in uh, uh, first position or second position mm. that whatever we're going to call that um, so this is how it's going to sound
Now, as that becomes comfortable, double that up and make those half notes. The thing that is going to trip you up is not finding the right notes, it's keeping your left hand and your right hand in time. This is just like guitar players uh, when they're first learning and there's like, oh yeah, that's, that's that grip and then that's that grip, but it takes you 14 seconds between each grip when you're first going to do it. And so the challenge is staying in time and fighting through the urge to hesitate. You just kind of have to like crash through that wall in your mind. And so you want that wall to be as thin as possible. So adding all this extra rhythm isn't gonna be helpful. What you wanna do is just practice getting through that wall in your head because you're not reading these notes on a page. And so people who are used to um, reading off the page and being able to just practice these very specific movements until they're fluid, this is gonna feel a little bit uncomfortable. So you wanna keep it simple uh, and just force yourself to stay in time through all those chord changes until your fingers are finding their way and it just feels super steady. This might mean that you're gonna to have to do this at a very slow tempo. That's okay. Um, you could you know, easily set a metronome for 60 if you wanted to. So I've got this set now to 60, nice and slow. If, if anyone was watching my left hand, there's sort of movements that I'm doing to make that transition even easier. So look what I do from here. So I'm staying on my thumb, pivoting on my thumb, five and two. And then from here, my thumb stays on the D and then I'm back over to five and two. So I'm doing as little moving as possible. So, uh, and then I'll leave you with one final tip because I don't want this, the video, this video to get too long and uh, too dragged out. Um, but after this is feeling uh, nice and comfortable and you've got, say you're down to quarter notes for this, you're gonna add uh, one extra, your very, very first syncopation. Uh, and this is called the Charleston rhythm. This goes back to a dance move back from the 1920s, I believe. Uh, and it's basically a dotted quarter note followed by an eighth note tied uh, to a half note. So it sounds like. That's gonna take a little bit more practice than it looks like. So don't worry if this is become, like the first time this happens, your left hand just completely derails and you can't keep time anymore. That's when you slow the metronome down and you just, again, fight through that wall of hesitation until you really start to feel that syncopation. <laughs> That is a fantastic place to start because the whole, um, to me, if anyone has ever tried to learn a second language as an adult, uh, starting to improvise is exactly the same type of roadblocks in your mind, which is in theory, you kind of know what's supposed to happen. But the minute that you go to actually have a conversation, you're like, no, 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 I'm not ready. Uh, let me have more practice and uh, you know, I'll get, I'll get back to you, Mr. or Mrs. Coach or teacher or friend who's trying to help me with this language. Uh, the point is that you are going to have to experience these little mini moments of discomfort 
uh, and just feeling like you're a fish out of water uh, that you just constantly keep pushing through uh, and giving yourself a structure to do that and also not being too hard on yourself. Understanding that even though it may seem simple, it actually takes your brain like it's training itself to do and to hear and to think about new things. So uh, if you get to the point where you can do this, give yourself a big pat on the back and just kind of enjoy how that sounds. Because once you get there, it's actually pretty easy to get to something like this. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, hope that we will see you back for more of these types of videos. Please let us know what you thought of it in the comments. And if it's the first time that you've stopped by, we would really love it if you hit subscribe and that little notification bell. So every time we come out with either a piano review video or a how-to video or videos like this, you will be kept informed and hopefully you enjoy them and love them uh, and come back for more. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel and we will see you again next time. Thanks so much. Well.